RTA's weekly announcements for the radio and television trade. High definition television. Could recent developments lead to a world standard? Peter Ashforth talks to Pat Hawker. In transmitter news, the continuing expansion of the Channel 4 network and details of four new relays. In Dorset, Chilfroom, in Devon, Clennan Valley and South Brent, and in the West Midlands, Hales Owen. But first, over to Peter Ashforth. The other week, during our feature on satellites, we mentioned the problem of better quality pictures. And I thought I'd pick your brains a little more on this subject today, Pat. Now, there are at least two systems already in existence for improving picture quality. One is a high-definition system developed by the Japanese, and the other is an enhanced Mac system, which has been developed in this country. Now, first off, I thought I'd ask you, whereabouts are we uh, in terms of time? Is there a programme for things happening here? I mean, are we all going to be benefiting from these systems in, say, five years' time? Well, it's an interesting question, that, because the situation is that the, the Japanese system, the 1125 line 60 hertz system, was actually proposed as a world standard at the last international meeting, uh, the one in Yugoslavia last May, and received support also from the Americans. But in fact, the European delegations were firmly against this system, and um, the whole sort of question was deferred until the next meeting of the CCIR, which would normally be four years later, but possibly an interim meeting in two years' time. The thing sounds committee-bound at the moment, which uh, isn't unusual in broadcasting, I must admit. Um, are we talking here about ordinary domestic receivers? Well, the, the Japanese system would be suitable for reception on special receivers. It would have to be entirely new receivers, and they would obviously incorporate widescreen pictures. Um, on the other hand, the enhanced 625 line systems would be receivable as normal pictures on existing receivers, but with special receivers you would receive it as a widescreen picture with improved picture quality. Of course, in both cases you would need a certain amount of new uh, studio equipment to handle the, the widescreen pictures and so on, but for the Japanese one, as I understand it, you would need completely uh, a, a new set of, of, of equipment. So let's get this quite clear. Both these systems basically are designed for special widescreen domestic receivers. Oh, I think that everybody agrees that if you have large screen pictures, um, you do need to go nearer to the cinema idea of having widescreen, what we talk about the aspect ratio of 5 to 3 or 16 to 9. 16 to 9 seems to be the preferred figure these days. And that would be much better for viewing on large screens. But again, I would emphasize that the existing 625 line system, um, you won't get much benefit if you are still using uh, normal types of picture tubes. But there are no widescreen uh, receivers in existence at the moment. I mean, the public can't buy widescreen receivers, can they? Oh, no. And I would say that they, although the Japanese have demonstrated on closed circuit their system, and, and certainly they produce marvellous pictures, um, it, has, it was only being proposed as a production standard. They have not officially put forward any means of transmitting it on a satellite channel, although they have developed a system they call Muse that would allow the signal to be put into a a single channel on the satellite, but again is a system that is not liked by many of the European broadcasters. This would seem to be a major development if it ever came about. Uh, would it be possible to sort of go halfway with such a system? I mean, how about uh, generating the pictures in the studio using some of this equipment, high definition, high quality equipment, and then converting it back down again for transmission to an ordinary domestic receiver. Would you see any benefit in that? Yes, there could be benefits. In fact, um, this is one of the suggestions that has been much considered, and in fact it's been considered also in Europe, where people have proposed generating at 1250 lines and then transmitting it as 625 lines. The difficulties and the arguments that arise then is this business of the, of the field rate. Um, you've, you've got the Americans and Japanese committed to 60 field systems because they have 60 hertz main supplies. You've got all of Europe, Australia and, and many other places committed to 50 hertz, uh, 50 field systems. And if you were to try and have a common production standard, 
you would really need to have it at neither of those rates, um, partly because if you try and produce a program in a studio with um, 50 hertz main supplies and recording at 60 fields, you start getting all sorts of odd beat patterns. It is thought that there might be some field rates which could convert nicely to, to either system. But there again, it's all a matter of discussion at the moment. So uh, ideally, you'd need a world standard for this. Well, this which is sounds like a massive problem. To yeah, me. It is a massive problem, and in fact, many of us doubt whether there ever will be a single world standard. Although officially, uh, the CCIR countries are committed to trying to find one. For one thing, there's a lot of research going on in Europe under what are called Eureka projects, which is a sort of funded research program designed specifically to try and improve television systems evolving from the, from the Mac standard. Pat Hawker looking into the future with Peter Ashforth. But back to the present and special announcements. In Scotland, Ross Neath is off this morning between 8 and 11. This is for electrical work and also affects Ardner Dam and Gairlock Head. In North Wales, Thlinochlin is off this morning between 9.30 and 11 for an electrical inspection. And tomorrow morning, S4C from the main station at Blind Pluith is expected to be off between 8 and 11 for maintenance work. On Thursday in South Wales, both Rhonda and Rhonda B will be off between 9 and midday because of work by the electricity board. This will also affect Tinewith. In Leeds, the Headingley relay will be off on Thursday afternoon between 1 and 4, also because of work by the electricity board. And for the same reason, on Friday, the two-channel relay at Kings Lynn will be off between 9 and 4. New relays now, and in Torbay, Clennon Valley is expected on air in a couple of weeks. It's for about 1,100 people in parts of Clennon Valley and Totnes Road, Paynton. Programmes from Television South West and TVAM will be on Channel 49, with Channel 4 on 42. Group B aerials should be used vertically polarised. Clennon Valley is due on the air in a couple of weeks. Also expected in a couple of weeks near Buckfastley, South Brent. This relay will be a benefit to nearly 500 people in southern outskirts of South Brent, Brent Mill and Higher Turtley. Programmes from TSW and TVAM will be on Channel 43 and Channel 4 on 50. The aerial group is B, vertically polarised. At South Brent, expected to come on air in a couple of weeks. And hope to be ready in early April, in Dorset, Chilfroom, HTV West and TVAM on Channel 45 and Channel 4 on 52. The aerial group is B, but in this case the polarisation is horizontal. In the West Midlands, Hales Owen, Central and TVAM on 61 and Channel 4 on 54. The aerial group is CD and the polarisation vertical. These relays expected on the air in early April. Channel 4 next and one more relay now equipped. In Scotland, Methven on Channel 32. This adds another 1,000 people to Channel 4's coverage. Now due later this week, Strathallan on Channel 42. Also in North Yorkshire, Bainbridge on Channel 53. And in Cornwall, Helston on 54. And expected next week in Gloucestershire, Evening. The channel here is 47. And that's all for this week. But if you have any technical queries on independent television or local radio, do contact us. You can telephone our inquiry office on Winchester, area code 0962 822444. If it's cheaper, you can dial our London number, 584 and ask for engineering information. We'll be back again next Tuesday at 9.15 and also at 12.15 in all regions except Wales. And we'll be showing a promotion for a new development in teletext known as Fast Text. So, from Bruce Randall and from me, Maureen Nicholson, goodbye until next week. Thank you.